we had some technical difficulties. So if you can hear us, uh, please go ahead and shoot an email uh, to us just so we can keep flowing. Yeah, actually, if you're in a group, if you're in a Facebook group, a uh, Prop Photographer's Facebook group, if you can message us there as well and yeah. let us know, that would be great. We're going to be getting ready in about uh, three minutes. Angela's here. Hi, yeah. Angela. Hey, Angela. Just give us a couple a couple minutes because uh, we're getting a ton of emails. Apparently, the software we're using, uh, we moved over to a new server, and it looks like that server is not accepting the scripting properly for some reason. And um, so we're just going to get some errors. But uh, again, just hang tight. If you are here, if you can just go ahead and in, in, in the message uh, spot, let us know that you are in the group that or on the webinar that way we know. Are you guys super excited today? We're going to bang into some social media information. I know you're pumped up about that. And I'm in the group. Uh, Kimberly is here. Hey, Kimberly. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. This is. Yeah, again, if you're in the group, we're just gonna we're gonna start a couple minutes late because of the technical difficulties of this new software that we're running. We're definitely not webinar experts, but uh, <laughs> we're we're trying. We're learning here. <laughs> we just got came back from Florida, so you know, hit the ground running, and we were really excited to to get this going for you guys and. You know, Murphy's Law, everything putting together didn't exactly work out <laughs> perfectly, but we got some good stuff for you guys today. Ah, here we go. Yolanda. Hey, Yolanda. And you know what, guys? I'm going to plug in a new microphone, and we're going to see if we can get it rocking. So if I go silent for a couple minutes, uh, I'll unplug it. Um, but uh, I'll actually probably type on the screen or something if you can hear me. <laughs> uh, but I just want to see if we can get the uh, the clarity coming in a little bit better uh, on on the sound itself. So I'm going to attempt to do this. I'm not sure if it's. Let me just see if the mic looks on. I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. Let me go ahead into the preferences real quick just to to see. Uh, we want to. I guess we don't want to see our podcast software right now. <laughs> Yolanda is patiently waiting. Thank okay, you, thanks, Yolanda. Thanks, Yolanda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, can you let me know if you can hear the hear the the sound? Okay. We uh, I switched over to a different microphone just to make sure it, it comes over a little bit more solid. Uh, let me know if it's a little too high, a little too low. Um, and again, what's happening is we have two laptops up, so Melissa can help uh, in the Prop Photographers group. Anybody that's logged in, um, she can make them aware that uh, the new link and communicate with them. And those that are not in the Prop Photographers group that came through uh, other sources, uh, she is diligently replying to a ton of emails that are coming over, which actually that chat box that you do right now, we're working on a real chat function uh, software piece in the future. But as you can see, uh, just like everything else, we, we get these little technical glitches that, that happen, uh, especially when we do things outside of our element. But Carrie's here, and she said the new mic is fine. Okay, so Carrie is in, and she says the new mic is fine. So that's great. Uh, thanks for, for letting us know that. And um, again, I apologize about the software glitch. Uh, we just moved over to a new server for our entire company, uh, our multiple websites. And in that, uh, of course, you're going to get scripting errors and software errors, and and uh, we're living through that right now. Um, it is looks like we're going to looking for snow this weekend. Uh, we're not excited about that. We just came back from <laughs> Florida. Uh, we went from flip-flops and shorts to uh, bundling up with hats and gloves and everything. Uh, I think it's like 17 degrees here. Uh, so if you're, in, if you're in the webinar right now, if you can let us know um, that you're here um, and also let us know where you're from. Uh, this will probably overwhelm Melissa even more. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, uh, but really excited to have you guys uh, here. Uh, we. Because of our trip as well, we our last webinar that or our last podcast that we just did, uh, we actually did it on the road while traveling uh, between West Palm Beach and Orlando uh, last week, and we just finally edited it down last night, 
and got that up. Uh, it has not been officially published, but it looks like a few of you might subscribe to us because there's probably about 60 or 70 people that have already listened to the uh, podcast from from yesterday um, for this week. Uh, but it's about uh, business being a numbers game. And it kind of ties into what we're going to be talking about a little bit today as well. Um, let me just see. Do you, do you have your... Um, can you make sure your sound is Yeah, off? I'm going to do that right now. Yeah, yeah. Thank right, you. Right Sorry. There. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting this little buzz in, in the background here. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to wait a, a minute or two more, and, I, and I'm being very respectful for everybody's time. I appreciate you hanging out with us today, and I, I don't want to take away uh, from your time. And keep in mind that if, if you have to, to roll out at a certain point since we start a little bit late, uh, this will... The software itself will automatically send a replay, but if you come back uh, to the link, or you know, we'll post a new link in the Prop Photographers group um, that'll have the replay, the fresh replay, because I, I just don't want to lean on the software uh, that we're using to try to automate the system and make our life um, more simple. And I think uh, a lot of us run into this, even in our businesses, that sometimes we invest in uh, things that are supposed to simplify our lives, and I think it ends up complicating things uh, even more. But um, so Melissa's great job. We're just going to wait a minute or more because it looks like we we have people sending emails that they trying to log in through the um, the soft or the email that was sent, and they're not able to properly get in. So I just want to make sure that we give everybody a fair chance. So I do apologize starting a little bit behind, uh, but we have a lot of great content here. Um, uh, we we do so much in social media. Uh, we we're very incredibly successful, uh, mainly because of social media and at least the three. The three secrets that we're going to give today are just part of a, uh, a larger toolbox of things that, that we do, uh, that we learned uh, over the last couple of years. Um, so I'm really, really excited to, to go through this. And I'm just simply going to use this, uh, just convert it over a keynote uh, that we put together while we are away and, and uh, convert it into a PDF here. That way it'll flow on the screen, uh, screen capture software that, that you guys are, are watching right now. So if you want to let us know where you're from, uh, we can give you a shout out on the webinar. Uh, hopefully you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, and I think we're just going to give about another minute and we're going to go ahead and get started. I know um, Melissa is going back and forth between so several groups and, and everything uh, as well. But um, we're really excited. Uh, we just had a wedding consultation last night from a client that uh, actually they, they came right in. We, we were expecting to do a two-step process and they came right in and so excited and sign up. Uh, There's somebody that we met during an actual wedding a few months ago that we did, but that original wedding uh, did come through social media. So it's interesting that the, uh, the previous wedding was a $6,000 wedding and last night they signed up for a $5,000 wedding. Uh, so just through, just like a recent example that just impacted our lives, that's $11,000 that just came in uh, simply from a post uh, that was done over a year ago, uh, which was a free post and that resulted in that original wedding plus the follow-up. So uh, and never know where that's going to keep going. And that's just that's one example. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, just to respect everybody's time that's that's in here right now. And um, Melissa, I think we'll attempt to field any questions that come over and or um, she'll uh, at least make sure that people that are getting lost as far as the, the bad link that the software sent out, um, getting everybody in uh, properly. So um, I jokingly put out there uh, when Melissa and I were going back and forth, I was like, what should we name this? What's going to get everybody's attention? You know, it, it, in in the copywriting world, uh, it's all about creating a headline that will grab people's attention because we, we have to interrupt people um, and from their normal daily flow. And that's exactly what happened with doing this, and this is what, in a way, what you have to do when you're when you're dealing with social media, because there's thousands and thousands of posts that are coming across people's feeds every day and have jolting people, and and that's the trick sometimes. But um, so what I want to do, because a lot of you are brand new, you you might have just jumped in a group, or you might have came from a different direction, you don't know a lot about uh, myself and Melissa, and I just want to give, um, this isn't really pitchy or anything. There's nothing that we're selling on this on this webinar. We really just want to give back to the community. Uh, we do have. Uh, premium paid courses that we have that, that we offer. And, and we are coming out with a, a very intense social media 
uh, photographer um, workshop, but it's something that we're not here to pitch that or anything. We, we, we just, we want to give information back, make sure that you guys can grow and improve uh, just like how we have in our community in the podcast and everything that we do. And down the line, if it's something that you feel you want to invest to make a deeper dive, uh, you could do that. But, but today I just, we just want to kind of give you a little background and then give you some tips and tools that you can go right out into the real world and, and use. Um, and some of these things I, I think uh, photographers are either not aware of or they might uh, totally overlook or take for granted. So um, the key here, and it's something that uh, when we we're coming up with the title of this, you know, it, it really came to, it was like, you know what, there's a lot of people in the group that are constantly like, you know, we're, we're seeing at the beginning of this year, like we ask people what topics they want to cover. And we kept hearing over and over again, that we, we need to know how to attract clients. We need to know how to get that perfect client. How do we do marketing? How do we do social media? You know, we got this topic over and over and over again. And it's interesting because Melissa and I were going to take the first webinar of the year and go in a whole different direction. But it was such a repetitive topic because I, I think all of us, it, it's interesting because if you had more business right now, it would most likely solve every other issue that you had in your business. Like if, if you had more clients that were paying, that were willing to pay your, your price, like you would have probably, you know, like if you don't have a camera that you want, boom, if you had more clients that would solve that. If you wanted to open up a studio, but you didn't, couldn't afford that, boom, if you had more clients that were paying what, what you wanted them to pay. They, they, so it's all about attracting people. This is something that, you know, that it really comes back to, how do we get out there and attract people? But at the same time, there's a lot of information that's out there that, you know, I feel bad because I, I see people getting misguided a lot because there's photographers that, that are out there that, that have had some success in, um, in social media and they might have like this one little tip, this one little tool that they do and it might've worked for them, but it might not work in your market. It might not work, um, in your situation. And it's, it's like this one size fits all solution and not all of us a hundred percent of the time are in the same exact situation. And, and I feel bad because it's like having one recipe, how to do one thing, one way, very controlled, but then you don't know what else to do. It's almost like if you learn one lighting technique and you sat there and measured, okay, this is 10 feet away. I have to do this at a 45 degree and blah, blah, blah. And you walk away from a, a workshop, you know, like, okay, this is exactly what I need to do every time. Then you wouldn't know what to do if you were put in a situation where the circumstances didn't allow you to do that technique. Like uh, our training, we really want you to learn the, the, the true tools and systems. So when you walk away, like you know what to do, how to mold, how to adapt to the scenario, to the situation. So. One of the things that we, we know that is really big as well is, you know, not all of us have a huge bank account. We can't sit there and do, like if you're doing Facebook ads, you know, the guru is like, oh, you know, do $10 a day. Well, some of you can do that. That's no big deal. Some of you can do $100 a day. Some of you can do 1000 a day. But in 10 days, that's $100. If you do your ad wrong, you're just at 100 bucks, And that might not be the greatest thing to, to tell your spouse or family member. Like you could really jam yourself up very, very quickly. So it's all about being smart as well. It's not just putting the money out uh, randomly. So for us, it's all about how to attract the perfect clients. And I want to put an emphasis on that word, the perfect clients. Um, and going through social media. And, and there's ways to do this without any money out of your pocket and or there's ways of doing this of getting creative with your time. So one of the things um, with uh, the goal of this, this webinar really uh, is to help guide you uh, with these initial three steps to, to make you feel comfortable that as when you leave here that you feel that you can go out and instantly attract new potential clients into your world. And I really hope uh, some of these tips actually open up your mind uh, itself. Now, um, if you stay to the end though, if you stay through this, and I know it's gonna be tough for some of you because you're on a time limit and we started off a little bit late, but if you stay with us through the end, I'm gonna show you on Facebook directly the one promotion that I did for two years in a row, but the first time that I did it very specifically, I attracted over 10,000 likes on my per, or on my uh, professional Facebook page. Uh, so this one technique alone, uh, it's, it's a very involved program, uh, but some of you, uh, it went well beyond uh, just a Facebook promotion. Uh, it was something that seriously attracted and brought in probably about 
um, the first time around to, to now probably close to about three hundred thousand dollars in in gross income uh, between the immediate people that came to me and then the residual uh, that came uh, over you know with with referrals and and other opportunities that, that sprouted out because of the promotion so uh, if you stay to the end I will show you that as a bonus uh, a tip as well and again I'm not selling anything at the end of this webinar so that the only hook is just to get you here uh, just to stay and listen and learn so um, and again if you're not part of the profit photographers uh, Facebook community we'll be continuing the conversation uh, in there uh, as well but so First thing I want to do is please, 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 if you have a cell phone, uh, just like I had Melissa turn off uh, the, the binging on her little uh, netbook a couple minutes ago because it's distracting. If you're on uh, Facebook or anything like that, if you can, you know, I just really want you to have attention because I think a lot of us get so caught up these days in having multitasking while we're doing anything that we don't give the proper attention to the task at hand. And I really don't want you to miss any of these points. And it's very serious that I'm, I'm hoping that you isolate and that you just take the time and stay focused on what we're doing. Now, give you a little background about myself. Uh, I have some bullet points here. I'm not gonna go into detail. Uh, those of you that are getting the Prop Photographer's book at the end of the month, uh, that'll go into very detail about, about my background, growing up poor and being um, the son of uh, two addicts, uh, alcoholics. Uh, living homeless several times in my life, uh, even as recent as eight years ago. Uh, I was very fortunate and thankful that I went into real estate industry right out of high school, did very, very well in that world uh, as an agent and then as a broker. Grew my company from one office uh, to eight offices, had over 200 agents plus employees that worked under me, did about $8 million in gross commissions, that's gross income, uh, did about half a billion in sales a year. And uh, very, very thankful in that world. I was named one of the National Association 30 Under 30 at the time when I was younger. Tried around the United States and taught um, tens of thousands of sales uh, people and, and brokers um, about marketing sales, presentations, in person sales, those type of things. Uh, interestingly, I, I retired from that and uh, was an absentee owner for many years and just jet set it and enjoyed life and allowed family to run that and uh, without me being around unfortunately they stole a lot of money out of the company uh, and even out of the escrow account uh, to the point that it caused the company to close abruptly back in February 4th 2008 uh, we shut the doors and I went from very poor background to multi-millionaire lifestyle to homeless uh, in a period of six months uh, my life changed and transitioned and I, I lost everything lost my house my cars everything and, and started from zero again um, now I've owned a camera since I was seven years old uh, my grandmother let me have uh, 20 bucks to buy one at a community yard sale and and uh, it, and I played around with it as a kid and I did four years of it uh, uh, photography in in high school and then from there when I made a lot of money in real estate I did travel around the United States and abroad and I did pay top fashion glamour uh, editorial lifestyle magazine um, photographers to mentor off of them uh, through the years and I learned about, a lot about lighting, a lot about posing, a lot about the details of running higher end successful photography businesses and so really I had to revert to that when I lost everything eight years ago um, and it's something that I had to lean on things that were free and one of those things is social media. Uh, at, you know, years ago I had very rarely anybody on my Facebook page because I was a late adopter. I, I did have a ton of people on my MySpace page. As you see here, I had over 80,000 people that friended me on, on MySpace and, and I was hanging on to that for dear life, uh, but nobody was answering my bulletins anymore uh, on there. Nobody wanted to be in my top five friends because they weren't there anymore. Um, is they interesting all the time we wasted on that? Um, but uh, then, you know, I got into Facebook and then I realized, you know, not having any money, I had to use the tools and systems that I uh, had developed and techniques uh, into my space world and, and transferred into the, the Facebook world. And so I very diligently, very quickly did very specific things um, to get my friends list up initially and then to start building my um, business page when the pages uh, came out a few years ago. 
uh, to build that uh, following. So all the people that are on my friends list and all the people that are followers, they're all real people. Uh, they're not fake likes or anything like that. Uh, so it is something that I've, I've done very, very specific things. But uh, that's a little bit about my background. The interesting thing is now now Melissa and I live, we just moved into a probably just shy of 5,000 square foot house, a beautiful Toll Brothers home. Um, we combined our studio and have uh, a three bay garage uh, that's converted into our studio. We have a beautiful client presentation room here. And it's something that it's just amazing to, to think where I am now and, and where we were just a few years ago. So the possibilities in photography are, are definitely there. Um, almost 100% of our income does come from the photography world. Um, even though we do some workshops and stuff, it, it barely, rep barely represents a percentage of, of our income that comes into us. So we, the majority of everything that we do is, is uh, photography based, just like all of you. So, so there's definitely a way, cause I, I just remember eight years ago when I was struggling, you know, like a, a $35 check from the local newspaper because I would do um, freelance gigs and the local weekly entertainment publication, you know, that $50 gig, like that meant everything to me. Um, and, you know, we've transitioned. So that, that's just a little bit about uh, me. And since I'm going to be talking the most today, we'll leave it at that. I want to, um, Melissa has an incredible background and story yourself, um, being a published author and having multiple degrees. And, and she's definitely the smart one here. Um, so I'm the entrepreneur. We have a great blend. I'm very, very thankful and blessed that, that she's in my life. And she's the one that keeps everything going here. So let me just move on, though. So over the last several years, there's several things that I've done, and this is something I pulled this out, I think, Friday night. And I just want to let you know, like, I'm, I'm not like, hey, you know, spend $10 a day on Facebook ads. Here's one little technique guy. Like, I, this is how much money I've invested in Facebook ads. And this has brought me hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years in the target niches of what I'm doing. And some things worked, some things did not. And also, we've personally invested, um, Melissa and I invested well over $10,000 in learning from the gurus, learning from the big hotshot internet marketing uh, guys and girls that are out there. Uh, we're coached and we're privately mentored so we know all the latest things that are going on. Uh, the moment that something changes with any of the major social media sites, we're made aware of it and know how to change the strategy and everything. So, so it's something when we come in and we talk about you know, what, what we're going to do here, like uh, this isn't just blindly like we're, you know, and these Facebook ads are, are con you know, I'd say about 80% are consumer driven based. So when, when you see that number, it's like a, the majority of the money we've invested has been to properly attract a client back to us and, we, and we've done that in a lot of different ways but a lot of you aren't in that position now keep in mind that's not per year that's that's cumulative over the last several years uh, that, that I've invested that's the exact number is I believe it was Friday night um, but I just want to let you know like what we're doing on social media it's it's very very real uh, we practice what we preach we don't just talk theory um, so you know what <laughs> over the last several years I've done definitely a lot of things right and I'm very thankful and blessed uh, we book out our weddings every single year. Uh, we have a, you know, we will do 30 weddings this year, and that's because we cut it back because Melissa and I are engaged to be married next year, and we just wanted to have a little bit better work-life balance. And uh, we do have a secondary team, associate photographers that work for us, and they'll do a, a more than 30. Um, I know we have 20-something weddings for them already booked going into the year, so um, they'll they'll probably be right around the 40 mark um, by you know, uh, throughout the year. Uh, we also will do over 800 headshots this year. We, we did over 800 headshots last year. Um, and I, I think already probably by next week, we've already done over a hundred headshots uh, this month uh, between the corporations and the attorney's offices and real estate offices that, that we've been photographing. Um, so really excited about that. We're very blessed. Uh, last year we just I think it was right around 140 Santa experience sessions that we did so everything that we focus on very specifically we've attracted the client to um, and that's that's very important like we we're not going after ourselves after newborn after pregnancy after family portraits or anything like that we're, we haven't been going after senior portraits or anything but if we were to do that I'm very comfortable and very confident that we will identify our, our perfect client and target them properly like we have done successfully uh, with our other markets that we go after. So along the way though, I've done a lot of things wrong and I'm going to share some of those things with you because it always frustrates me whenever we hear from the gurus or the, or the people 
that are in the business. And it's like they're the magic, they have the magic answer for everything. It's like, you know what, that's, that's not real. When you go out and do something new, you're going to make a mistake every once in a while. You have to go out and test something. Oh, that, that didn't work. Oh, let me try this. That didn't work. Oh, I just you know, made a bad investment here. Oh, let me, let me try this instead. This goes for every aspect of our businesses. And it's something that I think that's, there's an illusion out there that you just take something you know, that you buy from somebody and you go out there and all of a sudden you're going to make a million bucks. And it's like, no, there's trial and error. That's part of life. And, um, and you, can, you can learn just as much about your screw-ups and other people's screw-ups than you can just on how to do everything right. And I want to share um, things because on our end, we discovered this. Like, it's cost us a lot of money, a lot of time, and some pain. And to, to get where we're at and we made a lot of mistakes along the way and, and it's something that for us um, Melissa and I when we we're talking about doing this this uh, webinar it's like can we help everybody to learn also from our mistakes so that they can shortcut and get the, almost like a cheat sheet and be able to go right to exactly what what to do and avoid the things that, that we learned along the way. Because again, some of us, and I know I'm right there with you, that we go and listen to a workshop or we go to a couple day thing or something. We run right out, we're so excited, we start putting money out or we start putting a system in and then it's like, hey, this didn't work the way that they said it would. <laughs> you know, um, it's because there's not, you know, they didn't cover the what ifs and they didn't cover the challenges that they went through to discover the way that they're doing it. And you have to keep that in mind. Uh, when you try something new, you're gonna make mistakes as well. Uh, it's part of growing, part of learning, experiencing things. So I did want to share a couple of the hard ways. So, you know, through the years, we definitely screwed up along the way. Uh, I remember when I used to post on a daily basis, almost like salesy, like, hey, you know, this session, hey, this session, hey, you know anybody that's thinking about, you know, um, needing a session, hey, blah, 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 like, you know, tons and tons of times a day. And, and I think some of you do that probably currently as well. And it's like, you know what happened is, a couple of friends actually would say that they were very, and I was thankful that they were honest. They said, Paul, like I hide you from my feed. Like I, um, you're on there soliciting me 10 times a day. Like I didn't friend you to get these solicitations all day long, you know? And that really took, you know, I took that to heart. And, and I think that's something that you have to reflect on your business as well, is that there's probably some of you out there that you're just blasting away over and over and over again. Because I tell you what, I, I know instantly when somebody, um, when one of my friends signs up for some network marketing company because they are just like, wow, they're blowing up my feed 30 times a day telling me to buy their weight loss program or something. You know, and it's just like I just want to delete them or hide them. And, you know, that's what they were told to do. And it, and it just it drives me crazy. Um, and... I tell you what, and as my message here says, we were clueless, you know, but it's just something that I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to say it. I'm sure some of you are that way as well. Like you hear somebody else that, that has a lot of business that are doing well on social media. And like, how does one post get go viral? And another post doesn't even get a like on it or just gets one or two likes or not even a comment on it. Like it is, there's a lot of methodology that we've learned that goes into what creates something and what makes it viral, what makes people engage and what makes it sit there dormant where nobody else will touch it. And I've done a ton of boosting originally when that came out, you know, I boost posts all the time, total waste of money. Like I, I strongly, strongly suggest that you never click that button that says boost on there because you might as well just kiss your money goodbye. And if you just want to make a donation like that, I'll, I'll give you my PayPal number. I mean, you know, you can just send me that money directly um, because you know, the, the likelihood of getting good quality targeted leads uh, is not good because the, you don't have that are in the, the boost function uh, itself. So a lot through, through time. But um, the, the trick though is, is uh, coming back to, to what I said at the beginning is, how do we set this up where we can attract your perfect client directly to you as quickly as possible through social media, leveraging social media without breaking the bank, without, without taking that, the money that you earned and what you have in there, where you're working off of for your photography business, and how do we make it so that you're not stressing your life and your family's life out because you're, you're dumping money into something that's not giving it back? And I know that's a struggle for a lot of people. Now... This is this is funny because when we learn when we do the internet marketing things, they always say make sure you put a disclaimer in there. Make sure you have 
fine print, you know. Now, of course, and we have this on our courses as well, but um, I'm just going to go at this jokingly. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give you some really incredible tech techniques and tips. And I know because I have friends over and over and over again that when they hit me up privately and I'm like, hey, did you try this? And hey, did you do that? And they're like, oh my goodness. And they go back and do it and they get incredible results. But again, a lot of you are going to take this information. You're going to twist it around. You might not even do 100% of it. You're going to go into your marketplace. You're not going to test it properly. And you're going to just say, oh, this is just a fluke. This didn't work. You know, and this comes, you might be one of those people that go to every webinar or seminar or, or whatever and workshop and, and you get the same thing. But it really comes back to, and I, I always say this, and you'll hear me say this in podcast a lot of times as well but knowledge is not power you know because everybody always says knowledge is power and and the trick is is knowledge coupled with the correct actions is power because of course you can take the knowledge and in a negative way have negative results so it's not about just taking action it's taking the correct action with that knowledge because we need you to apply things correctly and you need to look and, and self-assess and we cover a lot of this in in the you know, because we get some controversial posts sometimes in the Prof Photographers group where, you know, I even talk about, you know, not posting about political and um, religious uh, things too aggressively in your own uh, personal uh, pages. And there, there's people that have very strong opinions about that. And at the end of the day, we just, if you're, if you're looking to promote your business, if you think about, even if you look at the political side, there, there's people that are like 50, 50, one direction. One's going one direction, the other's going the other. That means half of your audience is not going to agree with your point of view. Why would you alienate them? Um, we're not going to get into that discussion totally today. So, but I uh, just wanted to let you know that it's all about how you personally apply these things. So three things today, because I at least wanted to, to give you a little nugget in three different directions, because I think so many, um, Photographers uh, or you know uh, teachers these days within photography they so much focus on just a paid opportunity, and it's all about like oh this is the perfect script you put this in and you post it and the challenge is is let let's say you're in the in the marketplace let's just say New York City, and everybody goes to the same uh, speaker and they hear the same script and the, the same ad and you're supposed to use the same targeting and you and like. 500 people are in that room and everybody runs out and they all buy ads that have the same script, the same message, the same targeting, the same demographic that they're going after and everybody that week dumps in their $100 or whatever. Well, there's only so many people in that marketplace that are inside that demographic, inside that thing. So everybody, it's like showing up at a at a, uh, a cookie exchange during Christmas and everybody used the same recipe. Like, why even bother handing back and forth cookies because everybody came with the same exact thing? Like, it's a, there's no variety, there's no difference. And, and you really have to make sure you go outside the box and not always follow 100% you know, to the dime what people say because there's other people following those same people and you need to know how to evolve and birth and, and change and everything. But uh, so there's some offline opportunities. Uh, we find social media, we've grown our social media probably the fastest with the offline opportunities um, that because everybody else doesn't look at that anymore. It's just amazing. Um, and we'll do um, give you a technique with the, the online uh, as far as the free opportunities as well as the uh, the paid um, as well. So let me dive into this a little bit. And I, and I think Melissa's taking some questions uh, in the background. Before I go into this, is that is that question relevant right now? Or? Not right this second. Okay, so we'll, we'll touch about that in a minute then. Um, so secret number one. Now this is might be a secret for some of you guys. It might not. You might be resting on your laurels right now and you're not doing this or you might be on your high horse but at the end of the day this webinar is meant for people that are either stuck in a rut right now and they want to grow or they're brand new and they're trying to figure out how do i get exposure if you're brand new and there's already x amount of people that are established photographers in your marketplace how are you going to separate yourself from everybody else now you could go and do all the you know that i feel bad for the people that jump on groupon and things like that and they they try to do a shortcut on getting that business, but I'm telling you right now, you are 007 secret agent. People do not know that you exist. And at the end of the day, even though we're in a uh, online world, it's still a people business. So when it comes to offline, this is where everybody, I think, I wouldn't say everybody, but the majority of people where they mess up these days and where how I was able to come into my marketplace where I did not ever take a photo of anybody for money 
ever in my marketplace eight years ago and how in the world can I be the busiest photographer in, in my state now uh, that is it's just, it's just incredible and that's because I, I knew the tools and systems techniques to do to influence people over time and this is about being genuine and authentic I'm not talking about being salesy and tricking people it's about being yourself your true self so let's just talk about one of the one of the ways that that we build our online business and one of those is and this is not a big aha for a lot of you but it is for some is I in it I'm hoping that you get the gem that I'm saying in the middle of this though so read between the lines if you if you zoom in really close you'll see it in there um, I photograph specific events that are attended by highly targeted potential clientele now think about that I mean not just any event I targeted like who do I want my client to be because when you're in a reactive state and it's interesting this is very timely because this we talked about this in our Profit Tigers podcast this week. So after you listen to the webinar, you definitely go over and look for the, um, the uh, podcast that's about numbers, uh, that business is a numbers game. Uh, because right now, when you're in a reactive state, when you're waiting for people to come to you, you can't control their income, where they live, their average lifestyle, what, how they value photography or not. But when you're proactive, when you do a proactive task and you go out into the public, you can purposely pick very specific events to associate yourself with. We just did an event um, back in November where it was over $200 a person to get into that event. Now, it was probably a little bit above the our normal client avatar. Uh, just, we could just tell that by the way that the people held themselves and everything. It was a very exclusive, very high-end event, uh, but, it, but it definitely reaffirmed the the the, um, the technique here is that you don't just go out anywhere and everywhere. You actually target specifically. Here's the events where people, because think about it, people are going to spend $50 to go to an event. If they're going to spend $100 a plate to go to an event, that's probably an event that you might want to photograph or you might want to be seen in. Because what, we, what I did in the past is I went and looked at nonprofits, and a lot of them in our local area, they just had a staff person running around, uh, either with an iPhone uh, equivalent or a little, you know, point and shoot camera or just a digital SLR that that was, you know, one of the staff members, and they kept it on auto. And they ran around that event, and they would photograph uh, the event, and they would put the photos up on social media and everything, which was fine. And um, what I knew from what I did back in the MySpace days is I duplicated it and did the same thing. For Facebook, like I had maybe like 45, 50 people that I had on my personal Facebook page, and, and back then I didn't. There was no uh, business page uh, option, so it's something that I went and purposely took the tools and systems I knew. And what I did is I went out, and this is something I can't can't reinforce the 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 value of uh, enough, especially these days, is the power of tagging a photo. And what, so what I would do is I would go out and volunteer. I would contact the organizers. I would go in as an in-kind sponsor on their event. That's very, very key because you don't want to be used. So when you go in as an in-kind sponsor, you get your logo placed on um, brochures. You get your logo on the website. It's in the invitations typically. It is on the branding. Your name and, and everything is next to big companies. So my name coming out the gate, even though nobody didn't know who I was at the time, I was right next to like MT Bank, Chase Bank, DuPont Company, AstraZeneca. Like, here's my logo next to theirs because whatever actual money they gave in, I did it as an in kind sponsorship. So now all of a sudden, I'm being associated with these top line brands and separating myself from everybody else. And that, that definitely helps you with positioning, you know, going after specific clients uh, in general. But then, what, even bigger than that, what I, what I did initially is I got permission to be able to initially start on my personal Facebook page. Um, these days I wouldn't do that specifically as much because this is prior to uh, the business pages being around. But I would then, uh, over the years, I transferred it into my business page. Is I Part of the volunteering was that, and the, the organizer knew, like I, I will put the images for free up on my page. And that would have my watermark on it or my little copyright. So it's say like paulprophotography.com or paulpro.com. So at least I had a little visual branding and I wasn't concerned with that as much, but what I was looking to do is to build the traffic. So these are people that I physically saw face to face 
and I took their photo. And, and the thing is, this, this is how it evolves over time. You might not think anything big of this, but then what happens is the organizer, the week after, when, when you get all the images up on your Facebook page, and I would work that room. Like I needed, like it was my job to take a photo of every single person in that room. I needed every single person to be represented in the photos that I took because I knew this from previous. I wanted the value of the tag, the photo tag. So what I would do is I'd go around the room, work it very aggressively, be very friendly, very professional. Again, it's your avatar, so you need to dress the part, you need to act the part, you need to be professional, you need to groom properly. All these things are very, very important. So I didn't know who any of these people were, but I went in, I photographed the event. They loved the coverage. I gave them an extra copy that they were able to use in their own press releases, everything like that. I didn't care as much uh, on that end at the time because it was building up at the time. Now we do things a little differently now. I mean, we learned and bumped the bruise along the way with, with some organizations. And um, what's interesting is we, we did all this originally uh, for our social media building and, and now even all these nonprofits, like 100% of them now, they all pay us to, to do it. So we still go out and still are doing all these events. They see the value of what we're doing, but we're now not posting on our social media. They now have, have the, the images to do what they want, but they compensate us every single time. And we still are co-sponsors, so we, we get a nonprofit rate plus that. Now, now, keep in mind, the people that are attending these events, these are typically not the people that the organization isn't necessarily helping. These are the people that are doctors, they're attorneys, they're nurses, they're teachers, they're, they're activists that are in the community. These are people that are giving back. So it's very, very targeted. So if you can see, just by going and going in and photographing these events, having that opportunity, especially when you're building or when you're at zero, you're making FaceTime with people. So you're just not some logo on a computer where you're trying to push people in to your photography page. They actually saw you. They met you. The initial time, you might pass out one or two business cards. You, you want to be very tactful on how that's that's presented because you don't want to overstep your, um, your authority there. But... I tell you, the second time you go photograph that event, the third time, all of a sudden you're shaking hands, all of a sudden you're saying hi. Now that person you took a photo, you're shaking their hand. Oh, I'm Paul. Oh, you're Bob. Nice to meet you. Oh, you're the vice president of blah, blah, blah. Great to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And over a year or two, all of a sudden that person's now contacting you. They need family sessions. They need professional headshots. They have a friend that's getting married, those type of things. And you're hitting that very specific demographic. And it all started because you went out, volunteered your time initially, or you leveraged in on an in-kind sponsorship. Hey, then that more organization might pay you. But initially, to build your social media presence, if you can get them for you to be able to post the photos on your page, and let me, let me give you... Here's just a random example I think I have. I think I pulled up earlier. Let me just see here. Um, so here's one, uh, former Miss Delaware, Julie uh, Citro. Um, and at the, at the time, I volunteered for this event. Now, look at that. But the, the coloring's off. It's horrible. I didn't do CTO gels back then or anything. Um, horrible, horrible. So, but... Um, like I went and photographed this event, and this is a great one. Like I, I volunteered my time and everything, and um, but I'll use this as an example. This is and and I and I, this is on my personal page, so this would not be on my personal page anymore. I, I basically got rid of all those galleries, except for some reason I left this one up. But I'm just going to point out this couple that's with Julie right here. Now she's former Miss Delaware, and uh, Julie, um, she had and I and I believe one of. The, these two is her cousin, um, probably Jennifer. Uh, they later on actually contacted me because of meeting me at this event. They later on hired me to photograph their wedding. So here it is. I, you know, and, and the reason for that, let me show you here. See, to this day, like Julie's tag now, and, and, and you see where I had me. You know, so if they put this as their Facebook image or whatever, it's the moment they tagged themselves that day back in 2010, like this showed up on their page. You know, so everybody saw that. So Jennifer, uh, if you see here for Jen, um, she and her husband, like that, that went on their page originally. And then she came back around and I photographed her wedding. And it was because of this event. Like this was just a great prime example of where I, Volunteered my time, was able to make FaceTime, meet people, exchange a business card, build influence when I was building things. Uh, a few years ago, this is back in 2010, I was still in the building stages at that time. Because again, I did everything wrong the first year and a half. <laughs> um, in 2008 is when I was losing everything, and I didn't get really my photography business up until 
uh, late about mid 2009. Um, so this is just right in that line when, when I was building everything up. And this is just a prime example that I used my personal page to pull people in. They tag themselves and all of a sudden they're friending me. So these days on a business page, they would like your page. And um, that's something that from an offline standpoint, think about all these people that attended, like how many, how many people in there most likely at the time tagged themselves and then friend requested. You know, and that's how you build your influence slowly. You know, that's funny because I see several people that I've done different, different uh, photography uh, things with uh, events and, and, and whatnot. So, um, but that's just one example real quick. So let me go ahead and keep flowing here. Hopefully you guys see the value. Oh, I meant to pull that back up. So let's go on to, uh, oh yeah, so these, these are just the points that I was t verbally talking about, but definitely make sure you, um, you look at those middle and high ticket events, uh, you know, to sponsor. You can come in as an in-kind sponsor and sometimes you'll still be compensated, maybe you have a reduced rate that, that you get. But the idea here when you're initially doing this is to be able to post these images on your Facebook page um, that way, or on your business page, that way you get the eyeballs and the traffic. Because it can't, it's the greatest thing in the world uh, where when you're trying to build your social media presence, where the organizer of the event, if like three or 400 people showed up, that they send out a blast email to everybody and say, hey, the photos are up. Uh, thanks to Paul Pro Photography sponsoring, here's the link, boom. And they go there. Now we still have that happen to this day, but now when they, when they do that, they actually uh, come over to our actual website. So that organizer is sending them a link and then they're coming to, so they have to pass through the front of our website. They see all of our portfolio, all of our work to be able to get to their images and everything, um, which is which is a great opportunity because we're not as focused as far as social media presence because we already have that uh, these days. We're, we're looking at monetizing uh, more directly. So again, purpose to go through, photograph everybody in that room. Uh, Make sure your watermark is on on them, and I don't mean across people's faces. Like they're not going to make that their profile image or put it as a cover image. Or, you know, they. And I know some of you are very, you know, protective of that. I, I'm very respectful of that. Um, but if you want the likelihood of that image to go a little bit more viral and have people tag, uh, that you need to make a usable image and I make that watermark clear enough. For you know, we we went from watermarking everything years ago or a logo to. We want people to our website, so we it's a simple copyright uh, tag that, that we put on there that we use as a fast export out of out of Lightroom. And again, again, it's the power of that tag. That's that's what's going to grow very quickly. So that's an offline opportunity. Uh, we do a lot more than that. Um, here's actually some examples. So uh, here, where like by photographing this one event over the years, I actually got paid to do, do all these headshots. Um, for the YWCA, um, I had a, uh, a half-page ad in this program book uh, that they gave me uh, at a different event. Uh, here with a different organization, I had my logo in front of a bunch of executives that were actually from Chase, J.P. Morgan Chase, that sat around this entire uh, table, seeing my logo the entire time, and as well as that was up on a flip screen. Uh, and on top of that, I also got. Um, uh, call it out like as, as a thank you, uh, a separate um, announcement. So that's just something to think about while you're making FaceTime with people, go to very specific events. That's what I want to stress again is that you have the ability to target who you are going after. And that's very, very important. Now, secret number two. Okay, so here's a different one. And again, we have a, a huge bag of tricks. And this is just like a couple things that we're able to give today in a webinar to go in a little bit detail with you. But the second, uh, as far as online opportunities, that's that's free, is let's use that that power of actually, we're going to do two things here, because I was thinking of something else. And I forgot that I put this in the slide. <laughs> um, so the targeted search, keyword search. Now, in Facebook, over the last several years, they actually changed their search function, and a lot of people don't realize this. And in the search, a lot of you just put in like your friend's name, you know, to go to their profile and, and search for something, uh, something specific. But they, it's what's called a graph search these days. So see in here, I can I can actually look for a lot more different things. So one of the things I'm going to type in right now is let's say I'm I want to look who's on my I can type in engagement. Okay. Like who's on my friends list that use the word engage or engagement? Now, 
you look up here, you can look at specific posts and things. So I'm going to scroll on here. You got the national news and everything like that. Friends posting group and what's been posted in the groups and everything. So, and of course, I have a lot of photographers that are on my, my page. So I'm going to see a, a bunch of this stuff. But oh, there's Melissa and I. Check that out. Um, <laughs> we see here it says see more posts from friends and groups. So, what we're going to do is we're going to click on that. And what I'm going to do, like my buddy John, incredible, incredible photographer. Oh, he was posting about Tony. Um, Tony's incredible. Uh, both, both those guys are good friends of mine. Um, so we're going to scroll in, and we're going to look and say, like, okay, cool. Here's somebody that's in my, my like, on the 17th. Totally missed this opportunity, these guys. Um, just going to like that. I'm going to come back and see that later on. Uh, that's us last week because um, again it's grabbing that keyword engagement so come down here up oh, here's Megan and Cody Meg Megan's actually a, a local photographer uh, as well see I like that I'm, and I comment it um, this is gonna take us like targeted and show us there's Michael's you see there I saw that so these are people on my Facebook page uh, that are friends of mine that if you missed it in the feed you can actually find targeted, if you use targeted keywords, you can actually find like these guys got engaged on the 15th, boom. Now keep in mind, I purposely built my face, personal Facebook page over time. I purposely went out, shot a lot, a lot of events, networked as much as possible with people so that we did get on Facebook and we did friend each other. My page hovers just shy of 5,000 people and that's by design because I do use my Facebook personal page. I'd say 80% of it is business targeted even if it doesn't look like it and 20% is personal. I'm very, very selective on what I put about my personal life on there. Um, but it's something that I'm looking for for this opportunity. So again, um, here's uh, photographer friends, uh, Amanda, she's probably listening to this right now. Uh, here's Megan, uh, that's engaged. So you can see like this is, that's on the 31st. These guys, um, Mandy and Joe is on the 16th. So I have a lot of people that are on my page. So that, but that's the idea is you can use that. So think about it. You could type in keywords like pregnant. You could type in keywords like uh, job promotion or new job. You know, there's there's so many things that in your Facebook page right now, there's hidden gems inside of keywords that you're probably always, when you type in a word, you're probably always coming down here to specific pages. But if you actually avoid all that and just click that search button, and then again, when you're in here, look for this see more from friends and groups. And you're gonna have a hidden gem just hiding in the graph search for you. That's gonna show you so many, you know, it's cool to see like, oh, it's Tommy Pray, like there's all the different random posts, but I'm not looking for that. I wanna know who's actually engaged right now. Because some of you are paying for posts right now of people that you already have on your Facebook page. Um, and this'll, this'll even show up if, if one of your friends commented on a public post and said, oh, congratulations on your engagement. Think about if you typed in the word congratulations or congrats, like how many opportunities, because that would most likely come up as a keyword for people that just got a job promotion, just bought a new house, just um, got engaged, just, you know, all these opportunities that are out there, you know, just had a, a, a birth announcement or a pregnancy announcement. Like people will say the word congrats, congratulations, and you can post it in there. And there's so many hidden gems that are just sitting there waiting for you right there. Now, of course, on our end, uh, we, from a professional standpoint, there is a profession, professional tact, you know, way approach to go after that. Um, so it's something that, you know, we have a system ourselves uh, that we have in place to make sure that you appropriately approach people. Because I think a lot of people go way too aggressive and go very, very wrong on this. Uh, but again, that's a free, uh, one of the free methods to, to getting uh, that now, um, here's again things that I just said a minute ago. Like uh, it's amazing. Like I had this so programmed in my head, I don't even see the slide, and I and I know this is what <laughs> what I wanted to talk about. But um, again, keep in mind pregnancy announcements, people, new jobs, newly engaged, all those type of things. Now, the, I didn't put in here. I, I led uh, was leading to a another uh, potential. Uh, opportunity. I'm going to show that to you right now. This is this is like a little bonus secret here. Um, let me 
come down here and to one of our posts, let me just take something random because we've been posting mostly for you guys uh, recently. Um, let me just scroll down, see if I, uh, let me just, because this will have a random. Um, so here, here's on our, this is on our business page. And here is, we just updated our profile in December. So no big deal. Um, it reached 1,855 people. Um, it looks like about 25, 26 people liked it. So here's another thing that a lot of people don't realize that this is a little hidden, hidden gem for you. This is the extra bonus uh, secret that I'm gonna show you right now uh, as well, is if you're on here and you click on the people that liked the actual image itself or the post, if you look over here, you see where it says liked? That means all these people like my business page right here. Okay, this used to not be here. This is an awesome little hidden gem that a lot of people don't realize. This is how we build our, um, and this this even works for promoted posts. So when you promote a post, uh, and I'll, let me, not a boost post, but when you when you go in and you do a post through the ads manager on Facebook, and because I don't want you wasting money on promoted posts, those are those are a waste. But if you go on ads manager and you and you pay for posts, like you actually have this opportunity uh, as well. But you see here, like okay, like Melina right here, I can invite her to like my page. Jacqueline, I can invite her to like my page. Rhonda, so you used to not be able to do this. So you want to build up your likes, like you. So think about it. You go out and you photograph that event, and you get all those people tagging themselves and then they themselves and their friends are going to like that image or those images from that event. Let's say you had 200 images up and let's say there was like 300, 400 people in there. So not just the people that were at the event are going to like that image, but since they're going to tag themselves, it's going to show up in their feed on their page, their friends are going to like that image of them. And to think that you can go through like this and click that invite and all of a sudden, boom, you're growing your, your Facebook presence. Like just this past week for us, you can see, you know, like we're, you know, moving along here, 32,000 or 33. You see, we, we almost, um, in this period right here, uh, looks like we went up over just about 1,000 likes on, on our page. And this is mainly through me doing exactly what I just did. Oh, there's an image, I'm gonna click it, or there's a post, you know, like who, like at least 16 people that, that liked it, and go through here. Okay, it looks like everybody's invited. Okay, so let's invite one, let's invite Tabitha. Okay, boom. So now we just did two more invites to like, like our page. So now that's just sitting in there. So it's something that, um, it's an incredible way just to build your likes on your page without paying for it. Now you might pay for it in time, as far as the time that you donated for for that that pay, you know that that event that you were on. But uh, let's keep this flowing because I know we started late and I apologize for that. And I want to make sure that we we get that. So again, those those are two nice little little tricks to do with um, with that. Now page three, so. Oh, you know what? This is what I, I skipped ahead. Oh my goodness! I thought it was gonna be the bonus post. Screwed up. Oh, what did you do? I have to give another give another pay tip then. Um, so here again, coming back to creating viral content, you need to learn how to go into the ads manager. And those of you that are more advanced, you're gonna never want to even go into ads manager. You're gonna in the future, you're gonna go in what's called the power editor. Now, some of you, a lot of you, this is gonna be way beyond what you're ready to handle right now. But the, the trick is, is that as you put the, the images and the content up, now one of, the, one of the things I also recommend is that you, when you shoot like weddings or you do families or anything like that, when you have those extra people, because I know a lot of us just wanna put the artistic stuff up and when there's the extra people that are in the photos, uh, that gives you extra tagging abilities as well. So, but when it comes, since I already, since I already told you about this, uh, secret. I'm gonna have to go on and, and share a different idea. Melissa's giving me the stink eye right now. She's like, <laughs> uh, you can tell we don't do this for a living. This is awesome. Um, but the, the thing that you want to keep in mind here's here's some some key points though is that you need to make sure if if you want to uh, do a paid post, you don't want it to be a wasted post. You want to very specifically target before you post it all. 
what is your objective? What is your goal? Do you just want to get likes on your page? Do you just want that photo to have likes? I mean, that, that's what we did years ago. But I think a lot of us, outside of growing your initial online presence, which has definitely has a perceived value, we really want to monetize. We want to get people to contact us. We want to build credibility and get them into our studio or into our house or, or on a session or wherever, wherever you're at or whatever type of photography you do. We want to attract that audience. And, and the trick is, is right now, if you don't have engaging content, so I, I can follow back through with, with that page. So when it comes to, to that liking and inviting the people, um, if it's not engaging to begin with, it's still going to sit there dormantly. And we talked about this in the group the other day, and a lot of people don't realize it, but it's something, I want you to think about this, because a lot of people don't realize this, that when you, let's say you have 5,000 people on, on a Facebook page, when you put a piece of content out there, now years ago when you put a piece of content out, all 5,000 people would see that, whatever that post was, all of our feeds would be like boom, 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 we'd see everything. And then as time progressed, Facebook started changing their algorithms, they start changing the feed and, and how things show up or not. And now they're back to, because there's a lot of spammers, a lot of people that are out there that are taking advantage of that. And as a public company, they want us to spend and pay for advertising. You can get around this. Uh, it, there's value with paid as well as non-paid, is you need engaging content. You need to look image. Like if you're spending money right now, and, and I just talked about this in another group um, that's about Facebook marketing uh, group, and they um, they were doing this like engagement session uh, ad and in a marketplace where there was probably about 10 people doing the exact same ad. And everybody was just giving this person feel good stuff, and I was, and I, they weren't looking for critique specifically, but I was. I wanted to redirect them. I'm like, you know, the the image that they selected had nothing of impact in it. It was a stand. It was a nice image, but with these other ten people in their marketplace that were advertising to the same demographic of people, their image wasn't going to stand out. And they they didn't realize this is one of the key points as far as them getting any leads to them at all because these other nine or 10 people in their marketplace had very, very strong images, same, almost exact same message copied because they were all copying the same recipe and going after the exact same demographic. And it, it was just sad because they're all, you know, basically spending money to get the same 10 people to get in a free engagement session. And, and it was kind of limiting because there's opportunity there. Definitely if you're doing this in a market where not everybody is following the same recipe. But um, when you're in a, in a major area that a lot of people are doing the exact same thing. You have to separate yourself from everybody else. You have to go through your work, find the best work, but not necessarily work that you're specifically proud of. You need a reaction type photo. You need something that that potential bride and that potential groom in that one moment, in that one moment of time is going to react and want and cause. Because you have what you're doing, you have to understand you are interrupting them. They were not looking for your ad. They were not waiting on Facebook all day long, hoping that your ad showed up. So while they're going through their Facebook feed and they're looking to see content from their friends and family members, your ad has interrupted them. So you have less than five seconds to make an impression, to cause them to cause action. So you have to understand that Facebook ads is totally different than like Google. When you're in Google, you're specifically typing in top wedding photographer in blank. You know, I need a wedding, you know, uh, DJ, blah, blah, blah. Like you're typing in keywords. You are specifically on the hunt. But when you're on these other social media platforms, you have to understand people aren't specifically searching for that. So you're interrupting them and you have to make your content engaging. So stop trying to sell. Stop trying to sell. Create something that'll make them curious and go, wow, because you, you almost want to, if you can have something that has a little bit more of an article base to it or content base where it would stop them and go, yeah, you know what, I need to know the top 10 questions they ask uh, a wedding photographer, you know, or the top 10 mistakes um, uh, brides make in selecting their wedding photographer. Like that would grab you, that would be different. That would set you outside the box. This is all about ad copy though. And that's something that's well beyond. A lot of us are photographers, you know, like we, we got into the visual arts because probably we don't. <laughs> so um, you might need to get help with that. You might need to get somebody that, that's a copywriter and that's different than the copyright. Um, but there are people out there, professional copywriters that actually create very incredible uh, hard hitting copy that are headlines that pull people in. Cause you know what happens to you. Every day you get click baited into something and, and all of a sudden you're watching 
videos and other crazy content and you don't even know why you're there and it just it was the right headline it was the right text that was there or the video and it pulled you in so you need to think through before you do a Facebook ad you need to think through who is your target market who are you going after then you need to make it engagement worthy because if it's not engagement worthy then people are just gonna block you they're gonna scroll through it it looks like spam so while ad ads work and there's advanced ways of, of putting ads in front of people um, we're not gonna get into retargeting and other advanced things today in the webinar but there there's very advanced things that you can do to loop people back around that have been to your website and other things it's, it's incredible what you can do these days um, but for you right now, you need to be more smart. When you place that ad, make sure you're looking at the demographic, the people, because you, you, I hope you realize that when you go and do an ad, you can even exclude areas. Let's say you are in a marketplace and there's just a certain part of town that you don't want to waste money and in, in, in spending, or it's maybe outside of your marketplace, or it's too far away or whatever, but in general, it would accidentally get grouped into what you're doing. Because some of you might be right next to like a state line where you might have two or three other states around you and you really only service your state and maybe not the neighboring states. You can actually go in in Ads Manager and actually exclude areas as much as you can include areas. You can nail things down, like if some of you are uh, looking for engaged couples, you can go in and very specifically target people that have put engaged uh, in their their familiar in their status. Um, there's so many more advanced things that you can do uh, that we can't cover today specifically. Um, but again, when, you, when you're doing these paid ads, a lot of people just throw things up, they hear of a certain idea, they throw it up. Now, I, joke and, I jokingly think this, like if I was in the marketplace and there's 10 other photographers using the same recipe and they're going out the exact same uh, clientele, you know, it, it, let's use engaged uh, couples as an example. And let's say they say the age is between 23 and 35. And there's 10 other photographers that are following the exact same formula. While it might not be as many people, knowing that those same exact people are getting hit by 10 other photographers, I would then just move outside that age range. While you might not attract as many people, there are people, like we, we find the people that spend the most money for us are typically in their 30s. Like they have established jobs, uh, they waited a little bit longer, they went out and did their partying and they're, they had their fun time. Now they're attorneys, now they're doctors, they're, you know, they're, nurses, they're, they're teachers, whatever. And now they come to us and they're in a better financial state and typically they're paying for their own wedding. So it's not always 100% of the time just the early 20s uh, bride and groom. Um, there are people in their, in their late 20s and, and, and mid and late 30s that are, that are getting married. Um, so that's just something that you, you need, like I would, I would go there because none of those photographers are marketing there because they've been told this one way of doing things and I would push myself a little bit above that and advertise in a slightly uh, different, different range. That way I would get, or if the entire market, if somebody tells you like only go after and 20 people in your marketplace are only going after the women, I would just to do a test that and switch it to the guys. You know, you might not get as heavy return, but you're probably gonna get something versus being blended in with 20 other photographers that are all doing the exact same formula. So again, uh, coming back on that though, when, when you do have engaging content and people are out there, that will then allow you, that, that'll increase your, um, your likes on your page as well as uh, you'll be able to go and do that technique that I showed you a little bit there ago when I got confused. Thought I was giving a bonus, but that extra content I just gave you, I think is a little bit bonus as well. Um, so some of the common mistakes, um, we talked about that just a moment ago, but that is don't, don't waste your money. Do not promote, don't do the standard promoted post. If you look, if you're on your desktop, you look in the left-hand column, you will see it says ads manager. You need to start there. If you don't understand how to do that, how to work that, uh, again, Melissa and I are not pitching uh, our class right now, but it is something that it, there's a live version as well as an online version of this uh, course that will be coming out within the next couple of weeks that actually goes through videos on how to go through each of these steps, exactly our emails, our checklists, things that we do uh, that take people step by step by step. Because we've done this one-on-one -on -one coaching with some of our coaching clients. So it's like, okay, we need to take this out to the masses. We need to make it affordable, take it out to everybody so that they have an evergreen uh, course that they can tap into anytime that they wanna go in and properly create ads, properly go after social media. Cause we're only talking about three points today and, and it's something that goes way beyond this. Like the, the incredible opportunities out there, it's, it's just, it's, it's mind blowing. And again, on my end, it's just, 
if to think about it, like for for social media, and and I'm going to say say this, and it's going to sound very very salesy, and and but I want you to seriously take a minute to visualize it because this is reality, you know, for us. And it's like just imagine, like if right now, if you could fast forward, you know, um, a few years from now, and you could build up, uh, and and this is what we just did with Sand Experience. Uh, we built up an email list through social media of over 800 people. So these are people that are waiting for our Santa experience before it even happens. We don't even have to advertise it. We have an email list that we've built through time, and I've spent less than $500 on the Facebook ads. But here it is, this bank of people that are just sitting there waiting for the Santa experience to, to come up. And when it does, we just shoot out that email in, in September, and about and we have a closeout time. And by the time we do that, we're hundred percent sold out every single year, year after year after year. That's incredible. And, and we we make uh, we did actually a lot better than um, what we posted here um, this past year uh, with upsells and back end things. Um, but we we make over thirty thousand dollars gross each year off of four days. Of sessions um, and that's based off of our social media presence creating that following pulling people off of Facebook into an email list and that's stuff that, that we're gonna be talking about in that that, that uh, social media photographer um, workshop that we have coming up um, we are and we talked about it earlier on we're doing 30 weddings a year um, we came into this year about 65 I think around 65 70 percent booked out for ourselves um, we had somebody, like I said, that signed up last night. We have another couple coming in that's signing up. Uh, we'll be completely booked out for weddings for the entire year, um, probably by mid February, uh, on ourselves per um, personally. And then we'll have our, our social photographers. We'll, um, we'll build that. that. That'll probably be throughout the year, but they'll, they'll be over, uh, 40 weddings, um, for, for the year. And this is all because of the social media presence that, that we've created. Um, the things that we've done to drive the business. Uh, I just remember back in, it was actually 2010 was my first full blown official wedding that I got paid for. Uh, it was a Craigslist, uh, wedding. Uh, I was, um, actually the first, first wedding I did, I did for free. And that, that's a creative thing that, that we talk about as well. Um, but, and that, that led to, probably about $60,000 worth of business uh, actually beyond that now because um, that secured us a, a corporate account as well. But um, the, it's just amazing that, you know, we went from like about six to $800 wedding the first time um, to averaging right now over we uh, uh, actually just shy. It's right because we, we have 5,995. So we say $6,000 um, price point for, for our weddings and get contacted by this many people. It's well over, um, this is an old statistic, but it's well over uh, 500 uh, direct email leads. You know, people that email or contact us directly. We don't. We're not on Wedding Wire. We're not on the Knot. We're not on any of those sites. Um, we just actually, that's the second appointment that we have on on. Is it Thursday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on Thursday, uh, came through the Knot or came through. Yeah, it was the Knot? Uh -huh. Yeah, came through the Knot because of the reviews we got. But we've never spent a nickel on the Knot. Um, so all these people that are spending the money on the knot, like we, you know, I, I'm sorry, you know, it, it's cool. And I hope you do get business from it, but we drive these leads and they found us on the knot and, and found that they came to us and found us directly and, and are coming back in to sign up uh, on Thursday. And that'll be over $6,000 uh, wedding uh, as well. And just something, this is real. Like we, we didn't do weddings, you know, um, when I was homeless eight years ago, we didn't have any of this. Um, and last year we did over 800 headshots uh, so far for the first month of this year. We've done, over, well, by the end of the month, we'll do over 100 headshots this month already. Um, and this is like, we've attracted companies like DuPont, like GE Corporation, um, major, major corporations um, that we could have never imagined. Uh, that's not our everyday client. Uh, the everyday person is like the gentleman that's coming in later on today for his match.com <laughs> uh, profile. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's not listening. I did not name his name, but uh, he's coming in for an extended session. That's a $500 session um, to begin with. And then he'll most likely uh, upgrade from there to have um, nice professional headshots for, for that. So we really targeted our, um, our, 
our groups very, very well over the years. And that's, that's something that, that we've done and we can definitely pass that uh, again. It's just amazing. I, I put this in here to think that eight years ago I was homeless on my buddy's couch. Um, you know, just have never photographed a wedding, you know, never photographed professional headshots for money. And again, those $35 gigs, those $50, um, weekly gigs, like where that, where that took us. It's, it's just incredible as far as where that, that is. Um, I think Melissa, let's turn it over. Cause I, I see that you have a few questions there. Just um, a couple questions. Um, and, and then after we'll handle the questions and I'll show you what I did to pull in the, um, the 10,000, um, likes, uh, in one promotion. So, um, well, Lori, want to know if, if, uh, if for release forms on, on social media, like when, when people are tagging, if we need releases and then, Kim, this kind of maybe can go hand in hand. Kim wanted to know how do we get people to tag themselves if people are a little bit wary of Facebook and haven't seen the pictures yet, particularly when you're talking about the events. Okay, so um, Kim, on on your end, the uh, when it, I'm sorry, where's where's that question? Right there. Okay. Um, so, da, 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 da. okay. So as far as release forms, uh, we have never been required. We've never had anybody. I, you know, I, over the years, I've only had two people that have approached me and asked me to take a photo down. And come to find out, they were at the event, both, both situations. They were at the event with somebody that should have not have been at the event with, and they didn't want somebody else to know about that. And that is the only two situations where I've ever had somebody say, can you take it down? Keep in mind if they're at a public event or even a private event, typically the private event uh, ticket, typically the private event uh, tickets from the, it, because you're getting welcomed in, you're being accepted, you're not there blind and just taking photos. Uh, you're covering an event uh, for the organization typically. And with that, um, the licensing on a lot of event tickets that are given is that they, the people agree that they're gonna be photographed. And what I found uh, when I covered stuff for the newspaper and also the weekly publication I did is the moment you engage somebody and they acknowledge, because this, these type of photos, you're not just doing photojournalistically. You're, they're looking at you, you're looking at them, they're aware that they, you're taking their photo. Like they purposely stand together and give you that cheese it and you know, and you take that photo. So it's not like it's accidental. Um, and I've always, I've always respected any request that somebody says, hey, can you please take that photo down? Uh, I, I, I'm all about long-term versus short-term. Why do I want somebody to scrum told on, on the page? But uh, you're in a public event covering a public event. Um, and again, even if it's a private one, they, they typically have licensing or they have people sign off or you're agreeing with the admission of coming into the event. Um, but there's just a nat natural thing. You're not monetizing on that photo also. So you are you are just covering an event just like a news, uh, news photographer would be covering an event as well. Um, but other than that, beyond that, I'm not an attorney. So if it's something that you're concerned, I'd say consult a professional attorney uh, on that. Uh, and and what was the other question? How to get people to tag themselves if they're weary yeah. about Facebook. So I don't force people to tag themselves. So people just typically naturally do it. And what you'll find out is that there's typically at least the organizer or a couple people at the event itself that are your tag friends. Because what they do, you know, you might have a photo that has 10 people in it and they all got their photo taken together as a group. And it's just one person in that photo that will end up tagging every other person in that photo. So, you know, if that person wants to remove themselves, that's fine, like, I, it's no big deal, like, I, I don't care. But um, you're not gonna get 100% of everybody, not everybody from all the events tag themselves, but it, it's there, it does show that you're active in the community, shows that you're out and about, and keep in mind the bigger portion of this is that outside the tag and just growing the, the likes and, and all like that on your, on your page, beyond that, it's really, you're out, you're forcing yourself because of a social media piece to this, you're forcing yourself to be face to face with people that you normally wouldn't be. You are actually engaging with people that are targeted avatar that are hundred dollar, two hundred dollar plus plate dinner style people. You are going to be influencing them over time. You're going to find that if you keep doing these events, similar people go to other events that are similar in nature. And if you're covering that as well, you start recognizing them over and over and over again. Then all of a sudden, you're talking to them by name. All of a sudden, you're shaking hands. All, and, and a couple of years later, it's a hug, you know, and you know, kiss on the cheek type stuff. You know, it's something that this happens over time. And it's just an indirect benefit of leveraging your social media that you're actually going to attract people in the real world uh, as well, uh, pulling it in. Was there another question? That um, 
I think the last question that might be relevant to as far as with um, events, um, Robert wanted to know if you give a value for your photography, um, you know, for the event, if you're, if you're covering it, um, as far as, I think you answered about in-kind sponsors already, but if you, if you let them know the value of your photography services. Right. Especially if it's a, if it's a um, nonprofit, normally you can also get a write-off on this as well. They'll, they'll give you um, the tax information. So we, within our company and, um, I'm not going to go in detail about our pricing and everything, you know, right now in the webinar, but it's something specifically that in, in our company, we do have standard rates for corporate events. We have standard rates for nonprofit events and we have standard rates for weddings. So depending on where, and I should also say, um, for like person, we don't really get hired for like, Hey, come shoot my birthday party type thing. Cause we're definitely way, you know, out of the price range for most of those people. Um, but our corporate rate is, is very specific. And even like we were just at an event yesterday, uh, for Martin Luther King day and our, um, corporate rate that that's for DuPont company. And we photographed for, I think five hours, uh, at that rate. And that was at our corporate rate. And that's the same rate that we get any corporation that would have us out. Now, if it's a nonprofit, that's where we take our corporate rate and we do have, a, and again, this comes in the form of an in-kind sponsorship where we have a difference between our nonprofit rate and the other, but that, that nonprofit direction is, now keep in mind that sometimes we go out and shoot for a nonprofit all year long, like some smaller things that they're doing, and then they have their big major event. So what we do is we cumulatively look at our in-kind sponsorship difference of that rate all year long, and that gets added into that particular day as well, because we are giving them, I wouldn't call it a discount per se, but it is something that we, we look at the rate differently when we're trying to help out nonprofits. Now, they do not have a mechanism. Maybe it's an event, uh, once a year event, where they don't have a sponsorship opportunity. Then we do talk about that uh, differently. Um, but it is something we, we look at, is, is there advertising opportunity, promotions opportunity? And this has to be an event that's very targeted. Like we're it's not like the events that we're targeting have a very, very specific demographic. So the, the brochures are incredibly beautiful, full color process. The banners are huge. You know, like they're, they're investing in this event. You know, the, the, these events typically are raising hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, if not more uh, in some cases. So it's something that we're, we're not going after. You know, we're typically not invited to the local beef and beer uh, grassroots fundraiser. Uh, it's not to say we would be against that, but we, in those situations, if, if it's a local cause, we probably would just go as a guest, uh, not necessarily to, to photograph it, but just help out and donate and and go as a guest and, and actually enjoy the event uh, itself. Um, so I think those were the, some of the key questions uh, that we filtered through uh, that we had uh, today. So. The key right now, though, is for you to reflect on your social media business. And um, oh, hold on a minute. Not that post. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, that post. I'm glad she just reminded me of the post. So what I'm going to do is take, because I know some of you are hanging out. So let me see if I can find. Um, you know what? This might be a little faster if I come in here. I'm going to show you the post, uh, or at least the what we did that that got us to ten thousand likes let me see if i can go right to can you go right to cover images yeah okay so a couple years ago some of you do these engagement engagement promotions and everything so a couple years ago i decided that i wanted to do something a lot bigger and what i did and let me let me see if i have uh the initial one it's still up here because uh, i've done different promotions uh did i take it down Hmm. I was going to be able to show you the specific one. Uh, sorry, we're delaying this for a moment. Okay, I used, the, I used that image as part of one of them. Um, I'll show you this one. Let me see. I thought I did a follow-up one in here. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just show you um, within this this image here. So. What I, what I did is, uh, over time, I did two different giveaways. So, and uh, Char and Br uh, Benny were, were the winners of it. And what we did is I went out and I went after approximately uh, about seven or eight different vendors and asked them if they wanted to be part of a sharing program uh, of leads. And it didn't cost anything to them. But what I did is I went out and asked them for, um, 
is they can give me their own in-kind sponsor for one day's worth of service. So I found a makeup artist, hairstylist, DJ, myself, a, a, a company as a photography company, videography company, uh, also um, all the way all the way down to the dress. So we in the cake, and um, I found different companies that were willing to give up to a certain dollar amount of value, and we created what was called the Dream Wedding Giveaway. And this was done, like this particular one was done in 2014, <coughs> excuse me. And um, Char and Benny did win it. And it was an incredible wedding. We have it very well documented uh, as well. And they actually got up and did a speech and just directed towards me uh, as well. And then the father got up and thanked me as well because he said I saved him a lot of money. <laughs> uh, but they just had to pay for the venue, uh, basically, uh, and their honeymoon. So they, they had the... Um, we did a promotion where I had to go out and it took a little bit of time to organize, but we went out and I grabbed um, a DJ that I work with a lot that, you know, we just coincidentally sent a lot of leads back and forth uh, so that I, all these relationships were already like in place before we actually did the, uh, the contest, but I had everybody together. Then we had a form that was created uh, where everybody, and, and I did use that as a Facebook ad and we promoted it. That, that's where we did some of our promotions, advertising, and promoted for people to submit their submissions. And then from there, uh, we did a voting system. Uh, and I used a company called Shortstack uh, that allowed off-site voting. Uh, because we didn't want it to be like a like contest where people were just getting people to like um, their images. Because uh, a lot of times, sometimes the comments get a little bad. You know, people, I've seen that go very, uh, in the past. So people then end up liking because what will happen is the contest or the stock company would send them back to my Facebook page with a message asking them to like us in order for them to see if their friend won. Um, so it took them through a full loop. And all the people went out like crazy and promoted it and told people to come and like their, our page as well as um, to vote for them. So that created a huge buzz. Uh, we had a ton of traffic, got a ton, ton, ton of other weddings because I gave an incentive for everybody that competed in the contest. I gave them an incentive, um, like an unpublished discount in order to, if they still booked our, their wedding with us. Um, actually, the venue that Char and Benny were at, we photographed another wedding there of a contestant. Um, uh, the company did uh, uh, for Janice uh, recently. So it's something that even this year, we, we had a wedding this year uh, that was a result of, of that, that that just happened recently. So it's it's something that, um, it was a huge opportunity. It's something that we got creative. We turned uh, typical promotions around on, on its head and we just looked at the opportunity of how do we leverage what we already have as far as relationships. Because all of our all of our friends, like they, they want leads too, just like we do. So we, we had, I think, about 80 people compete in that contest. And there was uh, Chara and Benny, probably the, the most aggressive out there to, to tell other friends and family members to come in and vote. Um, that allowed us to collect a lot of emails. That allowed us to collect a lot of information that we were able to leverage and use into our other parts of our business as well. So that you can go on our page and you can see that post in another one. We did a national one as well as a local one. Um, and that garnered a lot of traffic. So that is something that if you're going to do contests, try to get creative uh, with it, try to flip it inside out, do something a little different. So if everybody else is giving away an engagement session, hey, why not give away a wedding and go big? So not all of you are probably going to be up for that, but it definitely has a – because it is a larger perceived value uh, and actual value. It's going to attract a lot more people, a lot more interest uh, in it because anywhere that people can save money these days, they will. But and it didn't attract us the the bargain shopper. It actually got us a good range of people uh, because we had the complete package with this particular one. So that's all we had for today. Uh, those of you that are registered, uh, we do appreciate you hanging out. We know this was started a little bit later than we anticipated, and we do appreciate everybody that, that's on today. The replay will automatically be sent out, and I think those links are going to be bad too, so we might have to send out a separate uh, email to everybody. Uh, this, this will automatically go into our archive and be auto-replayed uh, in the future as well, so you can always come back to 
uh, profitphotographers.com. And from there, you'll be able to go on to the webinars link that we have on the main page, and you'll see all the previous archive free webinars that you're able to at any point in time. So even if you're watching, listening to this one today, if you go on to profitphotographers.com, you're going to see our free webinars on there, everything from lighting and posing to how to run your business, uh, as well as topics like this. Uh, again, we do have a online product that goes a deeper dive uh, into the social media world, which we'll be announcing in a couple weeks. Uh, but we wanted to at least get this out for everybody today. So we do appreciate you all hanging out with us. And uh, I think that's all we have for today. Anything else that you want to add, Melissa? That's it. That's, uh, it. that's it. So we just want to thank everybody for hanging out. Hopefully you got some great information out of what we covered today. Uh, until we talk again, stay profitable. Thanks, guys. And that's it. Bye.